Hi, welcome back. Right, and we've got this chapter called graphs. But what graphs are they? There are two sorts of graphs. One is linear, the other one is curves. When we draw a curve, there is a turning point, a maximum and a minimum point. But right today, what this graph, this chapter is about for this particular exercise is on linear graphs. All right, we talk about linear graphs. Now, when we talk about linear, the word linear tells us it's a straight line. So it's about straight line graphs. And do they have a turning point? No, it goes straight up or straight down. So it's just a straight line graph. And a linear graph takes this form y equals to mx plus c. Do you see the order of x? It's 1. When I say order, the power here is 1, not 2. Once it's 2, and if it, there's nothing else, you know, if, it's, it, if it appears in the form of ax squared plus a bx plus a c, you call this a quadratic equation. All right? And the quadratic equation when the power is 2, there will be one turning point. Or if A is negative, there will be a maximum point. Now, if A is positive, there will be a minimum point. But if the power is 3, if I have, if I have AX cubed plus 2BX squared plus a CX plus a D. Now, if the power is 3, there will be two turning points maximum. Alright, let's take note. If the power is 5, what's the maximum number of turning points? Turning points means going up, turn, go down, your maximum and minimum. So if the power is 5, there will be four turning points. If the power is 20, there will be maximum 19 turning points. Maximum. That does not mean that there will be 19, all right? It can be even much, much lesser too. Now let's look at linear. Y equals to mx plus c. What does m stand for? m is called the gradient, the slope, all right? It's another word for gradient, for slope. The steeper the slope, the faster the increase. I'll show you more of it. And c, c is the y intercept y intercept that means when a graph cuts like this this is called your c when your x is zero x is zero your y is c right at this point of your graph who is zero y is zero great that's your x and your y is a zero the slope is the gradient. Now the gradient is important because if I have a graph with a slope like this and I have another graph with a slope that is this way and the third graph, if I have a slope that's this way, they're all passing through the same point. They have the same C but the slopes are very the red is steeper, the yellow is in between, and the blue is the least steep. Alright, the slope is least steep. Now, if I have a value of x, one value here, say let's take 5. Look at the readings. For the blue, the y is lower. This is this reading, that's there. So do you see, when an increase from 0 to 5, wow, the red line. The slope is faster, the jump in y. Imagine if you think of this x as hours and that's your results. Okay, let's put it, this is y. Maybe you talk about your marks. This is your marks. This is the number of hours you're putting in. Now, if I look at the blue slope, Miss Blue, and that's the yellow, and that's the red. We call it Miss Blue, Miss Yellow, Miss Red. Now for five hours, who's having the least marks? Blue. Moderate, the in-between, is the yellow. And the 
the most the increase is in the red. The steep increase in red. So the steeper the slope, the faster the rise of the graph. The rise, the faster the rise of the y. All right. So like for example, let me give you this. This slope to be y equal to x plus three. This point is three. X is zero. Y is three. X is zero. Y is three. The yellow graph could be y equals to two x plus three. All right. The slope is a two. All right. The increase is double, and there's three more. And the rate slope is y equals to five x plus three. For example, is so much more faster. All right. Increase of x. And how does y in behave? So that's the reading. Now, when we talk about a negative slope, what does it mean? If I have a slope, this is x-axis, this is the y-axis. Wow! If, for example, I have a line here, I have another line here, and I've got another line here. They all have the same point, but this is the steepest draw. The negative slope very fast is dropping. This is the drop is not so fast, and this the drop is slower. All right, not so fast the drop. So when we talk about a graph, it's a relationship in a straight line graph between the x-axis and the y-axis. If we are talking about um, money spent here, the amount of money spent, and let's talk about. Um, the I, I would I would want to put money spent if I put here as let me look at an inverse relationship when one increases the other is dropping all right so for example the amount of weight gain your weight gain all right and the more weight the, as the weight grows what is the state of your fitness your fitness. So this is a fitness level if it can be measured. So as you get more weight gain, look at this. This person here, the red graph. Wow, the fitness level dropped very fast. This one, as the person gains weight, no, too bad. Is an inverse relationship between weight and the fitness. The bigger and the heavier you become. Wow, can you run fast? I'll run really slowly. I tell you very frankly, my dear friends. I feel really sad. If you have a recipe on how to lose weight, please let me know. I've been putting on weight. Ah, because not enough exercise. I know you'll tell me. Put on your shoes, Mrs. Kuma, and go to track field, track and track and run. Teach less maths. Ah, all right, but I'm sorry. Kuma says, I want to be with you. I want to teach you. Right. So there's an inverse relationship between weight and fitness. All right. So we see that this. Okay. Now, how do we get the gradient? The gradient M. The gradient M is given by the equation Y1 minus Y2 over X1 minus X2. Or all right, let me explain to you what is y1, y2, and all these things. All right, now there are coordinates on the graph. Like, for example, if I have this graph and I have a line here, this point is a, and x here, the x here is 2, and the y here is 8, and I have another point b. The x here, this is 2. Eh? The x here, let's put it as 6. And the y here, this is 8. The, the x here is 6. And the y here is 12. So this is b. I want to see the slope a, b. What's the slope? Now, my dear, this can be your x1. And this is your y1. One point. This is your x2, and that's your y2. The gradient of the graph 
the gradient of AB, when I put here M, the gradient of AB, alright, if I take Y1 minus Y2, 8 minus 12, alright, and then if I put X1 minus X2, which is 2 minus 6, what do you get? You get a minus 4 over a minus 4. A minus divided by a minus, you get a plus 1. What other ways can we get the gradient of this line? Alright, O. Alright, A, B. I take Y2 minus Y1. I want to show you this is here, this is here, and they make no difference. Now we will take Y2, this Y2. 12 minus 8. And what else? 6, I take the x2. 6 minus 2. I get a 4 over a 4. I still get a 1. Right? But be very cautious. When you take y2 minus y1, here, what must it be? Can you put x1? No. Alright, you started from this point. Your x must be from that point. So you take x2 minus x1. If you took y1, here must be x1. So that's the caution that you've got to exercise. Got it? Great. Now, so we've got the gradient. Now, how do we find the equation of AB? Equation of AB. Now, well, there's a very simple way. You need to find out who is C. So we said y, you are mx plus c, right? And m, you are 1. Alright, you put 1 times x is x plus c. But who is c? Take a point on the graph that lies on this line, maybe 2, 8. So let's say add 2, 8. Your y is 8. Your x is 2. So what is c going to be? Yes, your c is going to be 8. Take away 2. So your c is going to be a 6. So your equation is y. Therefore, your y equals to x plus 6. That's the equation of ab. Now what does c mean? When you say c is 6, this point here on the graph, when x is 0, y is 6. That's your c. But if I want to take, I said, hey, I'm tired of 2, 8. I want to take 6, 12. Does it give you the same answer? Check it out. You said, all right. Or we take n, 6, 12. All right. Your y equals to mx plus c. Your m is 1. Right. And your x, your y is 12, your x is 6. So what is your c going to be? Look at it again. 12, take away 6, you get a 6. Therefore, your y equals to x plus 6. Oh la la, you got that. So, what we've done is just found the equation of a straight line. Not very difficult. Simple, right? Two things you got to know. In a straight line, how does the line appear to be? It takes this form. Y is equal to mx plus c. Who is m? m is the gradient. What is the meaning of gradient? Gradient? Slope. Alright, slope. And slope, how fast when x is changing? How fast is y changing? That's the slope. And c is the y-intercept. That means when x is 0, what is that y-value when your x is 0? So that's crucial. And we'll get to do more things in linear, straight, in linear graphs. Right, stretch out yourself. Be linear. Linear means a straight line, alright? And I'll get back to you with more things about parallel lines.